Hi, Ilta. Hi, Karen. So for those of you joining us, my name is Karen Kennedy. I'm a functional nutritionist and my friend and colleague, Alta Acosta is joining me. She's the menopause trainer. We have been, we have been friends and kind of collaborating on projects. I think, did we start collaborating like during the pandemic around 2020? Yes, I believe so. It's been at least two years, if not a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So we, cause, because we realized we we're both part of the mob networking group and we realized we had really similar interests and overlapping fields. And so we've done some collaborating and we decided that, um, yeah, we said we, we have so many interesting conversations about, um, our work and the clients we work with, and we share a lot of clients and we refer people back and forth to each other that we thought it would be interesting if we answered some questions that people had together and you might be interested in some of our conversations. So if you don't know much about Alta, if, if you're my audience, um, Alta is who I refer people to all the time because she is, she's is. she been a personal trainer for a long time and she has always been an online personal trainer. So before the pandemic put everything online, she was in that space. And so when my clients needed you know, their, their trainer in their pocket, someone who could be at their house and give them resources, she's always, always my go-to for that. Yes, and Karen has been a wonderful partner in my group and a um, the knowledge expert on the functional nutritional side of my program, the Fit Menopause Method, and also a wonderful person I can refer my clients to when it is just out of my realm or scope or a client needs a little more individualized attention that Karen can help them with um, alongside the CGM monitors or anything that they're working through that just needs a little bit of that specialization and one-on-one -on -one attention. It's been so wonderful to be able to refer them to you, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. That's been a really good relationship that I like. Um, but I mean, you, you started this fit menopause method a few years ago, this program, and it sounds like it's been really successful. And I asked some of the people that I work with, what they were interested in me asking you. And Actually, I'm not going to ask that question yet because what I actually want to know for me personally is I'm, I wonder, you know, you work with people, you work with women, right? Who are pre -met peri menopause and post menopause, just in kind of that menopause zone. Is that right? Yes. A lot of women in their forties and up into their upper sixties that have mm -hmm. gone through the program. Yes. So I know this might seem like too broad of a question, but what is the, what are the biggest things that women in that phase of life are frustrated about in terms of their weight? Because that's what they're coming to you for. Right, yes. What are, what are their big frustrations? Yeah, the thing that I hear the most often is just that I don't feel at home in my body anymore. I just don't recognize it. I feel uncomfortable and almost alien-like in my body, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I totally understand where they're coming from because here's what happens is that we begin as women to lose muscle mass in our thirties and it's just ever so slight. So we don't notice that it's happening as it's happening until one day, right? Likely in your forties, maybe fifties. And you're like, what the heck just happened? But it's been ongoing. And again, ever so slight that you don't notice it. And so what, the number one complaints are is that I am now carrying weight in areas that I never used to carry weight in, which is usually around the belly and around the hips. Yeah. And that is extremely frustrating for them. And not to mention that uh, belly fat, right? The visceral fat is the unhealthy fat or the ones that really could show us where someone is at as far as their um the possibility of getting cardiovascular disease, diabetes, yeah. and things that are scary. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so let me back up. How do people know that they've been losing muscle mass? Well, that is a very good question. And it's tricky because <laughs> oftentimes they're like, I didn't gain any weight or I haven't really changed my weight if they're just stepping on the scale. Mm -hmm. Right. But what's been going on, they've been slowly losing muscle mass 
very slowly and slowly increasing in fat. So there's been that shift that you body. wouldn't notice on a scale. You would only notice if you've been monitoring your body composition. So if you've been checking your body fat percentage or doing any measurements around your body, you would start to notice those measurements beginning to change. Yeah. Your clothes might begin to start fitting a little bit differently. You probably can still get them on. That's where people get confused. It's like the scale hasn't changed and I'm still getting into my clothes, although they might be fitting a little different. Mm -hmm. And then the mind games we play with ourselves, like everything's fine. Everything's, everything's fine. fine. Until one day it doesn't feel fine anymore. Yeah, I often say to people, maybe you can speak to this. And I said, if you're said if you're over 40 and you are not actively engaged in trying to put muscle on, you are losing it. Yeah. The scary part is, is that that begins to happen in our 30s. And it's mm -hmm. a gradual, gradual, slow, gra slow, gradual until you get into menopause and it goes and then it steadies out again because just age related loss. Mm -hmm. But there's that point in menopause where it takes a nosedive and then it levels back okay. to the steady loss. So you're so right. If you're not actively engaged in building muscle, then you'll just continue to lose. Yeah. I saw that same thing because right around when I was just going right into menopause, I was doing some DEXA scans. Mm -hmm. Um, I can get them through my gym. And so if, for those of you who don't know what DEXA scans are, that's the same scan that you get to get your bone density. But, you know, if you ask, they can also give you your body fat percentage, your visceral fat, your muscle mass. And sometimes you can get these at a local gym. They, I, there's a mobile service near me, a DEXA van that I like to use. And so I was getting, I got one sort of, I was getting one periodically just to see um, if my training strategy was helpful. And I saw, and so I was going in, I was lifting weights, I was doing some cardio, I was doing, I was just kind of flitting around doing something without any direction. And I had my eating strategy and I got a DEXA scan, sort of, did I get it like six months apart? And I saw a precipitous drop in both my bone density and my muscle mass. And that, I think that was about the time where I, I, I transitioned into menopause full on. Um, so you saw it in action. <laughs> I saw it in action. And I also saw how, I, it also made it very clear to me that just doing something and hoping for the best was not effective. Mm -hmm. It wasn't getting me the results I needed. I had to both monitor and actually follow a strategy. Um, yes, I see that a lot as well as women are like, well, I'm just going to try to do what I know. Right. And that's wonderful. I love a person who is ready to take on the challenge of just going, just doing um, mm -hmm. and someone that's willing to take care of their health. But right. But I also then they come back and they're like, OK, I'm ready now because I've been doing stuff, but it hasn't been working. And I'm like, I understand. And that's why we have such a design in the programming that is specific to really building that muscle mass, really reclaiming that bone density. And uh, my clients are getting those results. It's wonderful. They're getting their retesting of their labs, retesting of their bone density, retesting of their body composition, and just wonderful results. And that comes from a... a, a intentionally designed program. So just being intentional about what it is you're doing and then monitoring your progress and consistency. Monitoring your progress is really underrated. Yes. And so I wanna take you back about one, one other thing. You talked about bone mass. I wanna ask you this. From what I have, the research that I've done in terms of exercise and diet, most, it seems like most of the time, if you are doing something to build muscle mass, you will, most of the time, you will also get the benefits for bone mass. Do you, do you think that is true? Or do you think there's some, there's some extra things you need to do for one and not the other? Um, very good question. And I'm going to answer it this way. I'm going to say that if you're doing so, something for bone mass, it's high, I mean, muscle mass, it's highly likely it will have a positive effect on your bone building abilities as well. Mm -hmm. Anything that is you against gravity is going to have a positive effect on your bone density. 
Yeah. Lifting heavy, challenging weights, awesome positive effect on your bone density. Right? That's like the best thing. Weightlifting is like the is. Do you think that's the best thing for bone density? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. In terms of activity, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I think too. And we should go into depth on that sometime. Oh, I would love to do that as well. Yes. Let's do a future. Let's do a future conversation about bone density. Yeah. Well, that's um, that's really interesting. I think in future conversations, like I'd love to talk about things we want to talk about in the future, because, you know, I'd love to talk a little bit about um, maybe in our next conversation, um, like let both of us kind of putting our heads together about the strategies for building muscle, mm -hmm. like the um, the kinds of exercise, how you're structuring workouts for building muscle. Pre, you know, is it important to go in, um, you know, the whole thing about should you go in fasted so you burn fat or do you need to pre-fuel your workout? And how do you need to fuel after working out in order to get that signal for building muscle and the timing and what it should contain? Those are the things that I'd love to pick your brain about next time. That would be great. I love that. And also how, you know, I got a question, you know, how how to be consistent about a home workout, mm -hmm. how, how, how you people who have success with home workout and what they do. Um, and what, um, you know, cause that's a question I got. It's like, I, I need to do this at home. I don't like a gym. What's a way I can be successful at home with this kind of thing. Yeah. I'm going to answer that part, just a part, but then we'll get to the meat of it another time. But okay. I'm going to know that half my clients work out at home the other half work out at their favorite gym. So the answer is yes, you can get wonderful, wonderful results without stepping one foot into the gym. That's there's the so many people. Time. They're gonna yeah. be so happy to hear that. <laughs> it's true. Well, yeah. I'm looking forward to picking your brain as well, right? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the nutritional element tends to be the most challenging for my clients. And even my clients that are going through the coaching program where we touch on the workouts, where we touch on the nutritional elements, and of course the healthy habits as well. Mm -hmm. And the nutrition piece tends to be the most challenging. And I love to remind people that we have to work out one time a day, right? Or five times a week or whatnot, reach their, their workout uh, to-dos, right? But that nutrition piece, we have to eat multiple times a day, you know, seven <laughs> days a week. So I get why that is the most challenging piece because it, we have to do it multiple times a day. There is a, an abundance of unhealthy foods at our fingertips right the abundance is insane and Conflicting advice yeah so there's a lot you know a lot to think about and a lot of people can feel really overwhelmed and it makes them stop in their tracks mm -hmm. so i'm gonna bet a lot of clients want to know how do we make this easier how do we make it easier how do we, <laughs> how do we uh, make it still easier? get really healthy foods without being too feeling restricted or that we have to count calories or any of that stuff so we're going to come with some really good questions for you as well karen good good i think it's great because you and i are in similar situations in our life in terms of being on the other side of menopause both of us have always valued fitness all of our i think both of us for all of our lives and both of us work actually work pretty hard to maintain our strength and our fitness um so yeah i think because both of us share a passion for that in our own lives it's um it's something we can talk about with other people absolutely so we've got some topics i'm really looking forward to this me as well i'm so excited and i hope that we hear from others because here's the deal there's a lot of misinformation out there and there is a lot of uh, flashy and sexy looking things and quite often those are the things that our clients shouldn't be doing or won't things that won't lead them to the results that they they desire food freedom feeling confident in their body keeping muscle mass and bone density and being able to wear the clothes that they want without, you know, having to worry about it. But there is a lot of, a lot of information out there. So I'd really love to be able to answer people's questions, help get them out of the 
thinking wheel of taking action and oh providing those action steps so they can go, oh, I can start that right now. I can start that right now. Yeah. That's right. Cause you're also an atomic habits fan as well. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> Good. All right. So, so if you're listening, whether you're catching this on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, you know, in the comments, let us know if you have questions of topics that you want us to cover in our next, um, in our next recording. And then we'll write those down. And when we're going to, when we're going to launch a live um, interview, a live conversation, we'll let you know what the topic is going to be ahead of time. I like it. Cool. All right, Alta. Till next time. Till next time. So good talking with you. You too. Thanks.